Kitty Kitty. This is my vlog where I talk about all the things I love about sewing. Can I start by saying thanks so much? If you are already a subscriber and you're coming back again, thank you. Uh, we reached 3,000 this week, which is amazing. So um, I need to have my thinking cap on and come up with some sort of giveaway for you guys to say thank you. If you've got any ideas of things that you would really, really enjoy, please pop them in the comments below because I love reading your comments. Um, and if you haven't already subscribed and you like uh, sewing and you find this vlog interesting, please press that subscribe button and uh, give me a thumbs up. So today I um, have come with a little bit of a um, haul, a little bit of a plans and a little bit of a makes video. So a little bit of everything today. I went to the knitting and stitching show at Olympia in London um, on Sunday, just gone and um, picked up a few goodies, but I was really, really sensible. Uh, because I did my previous video, I had a really good look through my stash of fabrics and, and tried to reorganize the mountain that was in my cupboard and realized that actually I didn't really ought to be buying all the things, even though I was very tempted because there were so many lovely fabrics. But I was sensible and thought more about what I was buying for what reason rather than buying things without really having an idea in mind of what to do with them. So yeah, I was a bit sensible. Check me out. Doesn't happen very often, especially not with sewing. Anyway, um, today I am wearing a toaster sweater. So if you guys haven't already seen this pattern, where have you been? This pattern is like major, major popular pattern. Um, that's not very good English, is it? So this is the toaster sweater and it's from Sew House 7. And I was under the impression that I had this pattern because Simplicity have released a pattern with Sew House 7. Um, it's not called the toaster sweater though, but it looks very, very similar. And in fact, it's actually this version. So number two, whereas version one is the really popular um, sweater version and the one I wanted to make all along. So once I realized that actually I didn't have the pattern for the version number one, um, and I was up in London and the fold line were there, they're selling all the indie patterns, which was amazing to be able to get them all in one place. Um, I decided that one of my investments had to be the toaster sweater. So, um, don't know if you guys remember, I think this was from my Christmas, it was, it was from my Christmas fabric haul. My husband bought me this lovely, lovely fabric from, where did he get it from? myfabrics.co.uk, I think. Um, it's a grey and creamy white stripe quilted um, jersey. It hasn't got tons and tons of stretch, so it's kind of almost like a sweat shirting, but um, it's the, what makes it unusual and, and super warm is the fact that each stripe is sort of individually quilted. I don't know if you can see, but it's got really nice texture to it. And um, I just, when I saw this, I thought, oh, that's going to make a great toaster sweater. So here it is on. So you've got the raglan sleeve, which is what I like about this version. Version two um, just has a flat set in sleeve. So um, the raglan sleeve, I like the big funnel neck, which is really toasty and warm. And it's got huge cuffs, great big long cuffs and a big waistband. So I don't know if you can see very well because I've used stripes, it's a bit difficult to tell, but there is a big chunky waistband here. So um, yeah, and I was very pleased with my, I mean, it's not perfect in places, but you know what, they're skinny stripes, so it's not too bad. And um, the only thing I would say is this pattern does come up quite short. So if you've got a long body like me, you probably want to add uh, maybe a couple of inches to the length of the body. Because um, what I did as I was cutting this out was I sort of started to realise looking at it that it was going to come up a tiny bit short. So I didn't use the one and a half centimetre seam allowance for the bottom band. I just straight overlocked it on with, however, you know, a small amount of seam allowance just so that it ran along the edge of the foot on the overlocker. So um, I gained an extra centimetre or so by doing that. Um, but next time I make this pattern, I'm definitely going to add at least uh, maybe an inch and a half, maybe two inches. Because what happens is, I mean, it looks lovely when I sort of 
pull it down and I'm stood straight but as you bend over and do things it sort of rides up a tiny bit and doesn't look quite so nice so um, I mean it's just a tiny tiny bit of extra length I need yeah but I'm really pleased it's so warm and this fabric is so snuggly it literally is like being toasted so I can see why they called it the toaster sweater and I definitely want to make more of these because um, it's just kind of a nice relaxed comfy kind of you know style so that was brilliant I went along with that in mind and it was on my list and I didn't look at all the other lovely lovely patterns I bought the one I was supposed to buy so that's yay me um, the next thing I did was uh, in my last video I talked about this pattern which is a simplicity pattern 8014 and I want to make this version on the front here um, Simplicity have got a half price sale on at the moment in the UK so this actually cost me four seventy five rather than £8, £9 or however much they are now and um, I actually quite like all the versions on this but these two are probably more me so I wrote on my list look for fabric for this dress and I did find some so it's a bit wrinkly because I've washed it but not ironed it yet it's this fabric here which is a chambray. Um, I've got a couple of meters of this. It's quite a, it's sort of medium weight chambray, I would say. It's definitely not light. It doesn't have a great deal of drape to it, but it's not as um, sturdy as a denim, say. And what drew me to this was it had yellow dots on it. So it came from the textile center stand. I can't remember how much I paid for it. I should have written it down. I think it was probably about six pounds a meter I think and I liked it because it had yellow spots on it but I've washed this fabric once and you can see these spots aren't yellow anymore these spots are white so yeah when I was up there I was looking for yellow buttons to um, accessorize you know to put down the placket and I'm glad I didn't because the spots are no longer yellow they are white which you know I don't mind particularly I mean it's still a nice fabric it's still it's still gonna do the job it's just not quite what I had in mind but never mind so there's that um, what else did I buy oh I saw so um, this pattern like when I was sorting through my stash the other day I was looking through the kids patterns I know lots of you really enjoy um, making things for your kids, and so do I. So, um, as I was wandering around, it's really easy to buy children's fabric. There's so many really beautiful prints and um, jerseys that have kids' uh, motifs and stuff on. So, um, I really had to rein myself in because I have got like stacks. Uh, watch my last video if you want to see how much fabric I've got. I've got loads and loads of fabric that's suitable for making kids clothes so I really didn't want to buy too much more but as I was going through my pattern stash I remember this pattern which is um, Butterick 3475 and um, I've made this for my son twice it's a really lovely simple short sleeve shirt for the summer so I um, can't remember which one I've made now I think view C or D, which is this one here. I didn't put pockets on, I know that. Um, and it obviously has, comes with a shorts pattern as well. So, um, when I was wandering around the knitting and stitching show, I came across this beautiful cotton, which has got sharks all over it. I mean, how cute is that? Some of the sharks are uh, sort of upside down, like they're swimming. And I just thought that would make a really lovely sort of crisp summer shirt for those sort of smarter days when we're going somewhere. I could pair it with a pair of navy blue, um, just plain navy blue shorts for him. And that would be quite a smart little shirt, I think, but still have the fun twist of the sharks. And he loves a shark. So um, I think I got this from Fabrics Galore. I think I did. The trouble with the knitting and stitching show is it's just like two big halls of stands and you can kind of get lost 
If you turn around too many times, you've already looked at one stall, you can be looking at the other side of the stall and not realise you've already been around the... the you, do you know what I mean? It's just complicated. So I think it was Fabrics Galore because I bought another fabric from them earlier on in the day, so I'll show you that next. Uh, but yeah, please forgive me for not being able to tell you exactly where it came from. I remember it was about six or seven pounds a metre, I think, so um, it's quite lovely quality and there's a metre there. So I think he is going to look super smart in that shirt. And I also have some dinosaur fabric that I came across that I bought from my lovely friend Lucy Bennett so if you haven't checked her out yet we did So Swap It that's another one of my videos if you go back to the archive um, she runs a um, website she's also a tutor teaches online sewing classes she's like does it all so um, yeah I bought some dinosaur fabric from her gosh before Christmas I think and um, uh, those two fabrics um, are going to go and be shirts for, for my son. I think that would just be lovely for the summer. So that's that plan. Um, then I was wondering about, there was another um, fabric on um, that Fabrics Galore um, stand, which I just couldn't resist. It's an animal print. Anyone that knows me will know that I am well into animal prints at the moment, but it's not leopard. It's zebra. Zebra. Look at that. You know when you see something and you're just like, I just, I have to buy it. I have no idea really what I want to do with it, but I have to buy it. And I allowed myself just one piece of fabric like that because there was lots and, um, I kind of know what I want to do with this. I think I'm going to make um, a linden sweatshirt with this or McCall's 6886, I think it's called. I'll pop pictures um, in so you can see. Um, I have a Pinterest board which you can follow if you would like. Um, I'm just so pretty kitty on Pinterest. And there's a sweatshirt on there that has quite a wide neck. And it kind of comes off the shoulder, which the linden does. And um, it's sort of got like a tighter waistband, but it's kind of loose fitting and looks really awesome with a pair of jeans. So I'm either going to use this for that because I think I think that will make a really lovely linden. It's, it's a very soft cotton jersey with some spandex in it. And the colours are sort of navy blue and grey, which I thought in itself was unusual. Um, black and white zebra print would have been a bit sort of naff, I think. But because it's grey and navy blue, I just thought, hmm, I can see that as a sweatshirt. Or I could make a dress. So uh, the McCall's pattern, which I will pop a picture in, I think it's 6886 is um, one of my tried and true, fits me perfectly. Um, I wear the stripy one I've made to work all the time. Um, I've got a grey one as well that I've made out of Ponte Roma. They're just really nice, simple dresses that you can dress up or down depending on what you're doing. But I'm not sure whether or not that much zebra print would be too much. What do you guys think? Give me your opinions. Put it in the comments below and let me know what you think. Will it make a perfect linden sweatshirt? And I'd probably wear it more as a linden maybe, or should I go dress and have it as more of a sort of work wear? Hmm. Let me know. So, one last piece of fabric. I didn't go nuts. Um, I had a budget and I stuck to it. Did take some of the fun out of the day, to be honest, because I was trying to be sensible, but I feel better now because I have not got masses of stuff to find room for and I can crack on with the things I've got and the fact that you know I bought the toaster sweater but I actually used fabric that I already had in my stash rather than going nuts and buying more fabric that I could make a toaster sweater out of um, made me feel quite pleased with myself. So this fabric was £4 a metre, it's a lovely sort of like cotton jersey, I think 
uh, I think it's got spandex in it. I really hope I mean, it's got quite good recovery, so it's probably got a bit of spandex in it. Um, this was a bargain. This was four pounds a meter from one of the stores. Again, if I remember where it came from, I'll pop it in the comments in the drop down bo box below. Um, he it's a really nice chap. I've seen him at lots of the shows, and it's got a, like a variegated stripe. So. Um, Big stripes, little stripes, and because it was four pound a meter, I got enough to make a maxi dress. Um, if you guys been watching Sewing Bee, you know if you're not, why why are you not watching it? Unless of course you're in a different country and you can't get it, which yeah, that's not fair, is it? Why don't they put it on the internet? Anyway, I was thinking a kilo wrap dress because my lovely friend Emma, I went with two lovely friends called Emma. Um, one of my lovely friends called Emma um, bought the kilo wrap dress pattern and um, we were going to sort of go halvesies on it maybe and um, share it a bit so that we could both make a kilo. So I was thinking that this key, this fabric would look lovely um, as a summer kilo dress and if you're not sure of the pattern I will pop a picture in here. So yeah, one more piece. Did I say there's only one more piece of fabric? Because actually there's another piece of fabric. Uh, yeah, that's me saying I was sensible. How many bits of fabric is that? It's quite a few. But I have plans for this one too. You can see it in the background here. It's drying off on the radiator. This is denim. It's been in the wash, so please forgive me. That's more the sort of true colour of it. It's kind of a pale grey. Um, this is from Higgs and Higgs. Higgs and Higgs sell a fabulous selection of jersey, uh, jersey, denims. And it was 9 99 a metre. And I have had in my mind for ages that I want to make a Tilly in the Buttons Cleo dungaree dress in pale grey. So that bit's wet over there, so it looks a different colour. So in this colour, um, for the summer, with a really cute little white t-shirt underneath and a pair of white um, trainers or pumps or, you know, you get the idea. So I've had the, dun the dungaree clasps in my stash. I bought them with this dress in mind last year and never got around to making it because I was looking for the perfect colour grey for this dungaree dress and I think I found it. So yeah, that was my haul. I've got one make to show you today, no, no, two because I've showed you this, another make to show you today and this is um, my last video I talked about this pattern which was also in the Simplicity sale, this one is £3.63 at the moment and it's 1292 and I really liked this hat here. So I'm going to moan about this pattern. Why do they make them so big? Why do they put on there that if your head is a set amount of size, then you should make this hat? And it turns out to be enormous. There's so much ease in the big four patterns. It just drives me bonkers. So that's my rant. Um, yeah, his head is, I think it, I measured it as exactly 20 inches. It's quite, quite a big head for a five year old because um, my seven-year-old's head was only 19 inches um, but it says on here a small is 18 inches a medium is 19 inches and a large is 20 inches so I thought well I want it to fit this winter and next winter because I don't want to have to make another one when there's hardly any of this winter left and he probably won't get much wear out of it so I went with the large and boy, is this hat large. I mean, it fits my head. Um, so here we go. Maybe I'll model it. Shall I put it on? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All I want to do when I'm wearing this hat is sing that song, baby. Shark do 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 do, baby. Shark do 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 do. Poor love, he can't see where he's going in this hat. He says, the teeth are in the way, mummy, I can't see. This morning on the way to school, he's like, I can't see where I'm going. It's not, he's not wearing this. He's not going to wear this this winter. If his head grows significantly by next winter, maybe it will get some wear. But yeah, otherwise the pattern came together really well. Oh, I've got static hair now. Um, 
really simple. You put uh, a dart, sort of a dart, I don't know whether you really call it a dart, in the top of the pattern piece here to give it the shape. Um, this fin and the tail fin are trapped in the seam when you sew the top up. These two fins have to be hand sewn, um, which I'm not really keen on because even though I've got quite neat hand sewn, because this is made of scuba, you can see the stitches, so it's not as neat a finish as I probably would like. The teeth are made from felt, which I interface just to give them a bit more structure. And that's sort of trapped in the seam when you sew the whole thing up, leave a small gap at the back and then just bag it out, turn it the right way. Um, I've lined it with black fleece because I have, as you know, a large collection of fleece, which is all under my bed at the moment. Um, but yeah, what a, sh what a bummer. That is a massive hat. Massive. So yeah, I, um, uh, I'm probably going to make a small next time, to be fair. And because the fabric is stretchy, um, I'm sure a small will be fine. But um, not for a little while, because now it's the end of the season, I think. Perhaps I will leave this pattern for a bit and come back to it next year. Because my daughter really liked this one, which is like a kitten or a Hello Kitty. So, yeah, it's a bit of a fail. But hey, if I ever fancy wearing a shark hat on the school run, you know, I'm set. So, that is it today. Um, I am so pleased you join me. Happy International Women's Day to everybody out there. I hope you're having a really nice day and go and check out some of the things that are going on online. There's lots of sort of giveaways and stuff to celebrate. Um, and come back to me next time. I don't know what the next video will be. Probably a makes video because I'm itching to get that zebra jersey sewn into something. So let me know as soon as you can what you would like for a giveaway, whether you would like me to do you guys a tutorial on how to make something or whether you would like a physical thing to win. Um, yeah, just let me know what your thoughts are on that. And also tell me whether I should make the linden or a um, dress out of that zebra print. I'm erring towards the sweatshirt because I'm thinking maybe I'll get more wear out of it. And it would look really cool with a pair of blue jeans. But hey, let me know what you think. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Um, please press that button and subscribe if you like my channel. And I will see you next time. Bye!